follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. It is a privilege to follow him. It is a responsibility to become a fisher of men. It's not that we learn how to fish for men on our own. It's that we follow him. And you remember that occasion when Peter is found at the feet of the Lord Jesus. Just previous to that, the Lord has been using Peter's boat. And God is no man's debtor. And so he's going to provide Peter not only with enough to satisfy his hour's time, but more than enough to look after him for the week. He says, Peter, I want to give you some fish for the use of your boat. Launch out into the deep. And you will recall that on that occasion the Lord was not fishing really for fish at all, whether he was fishing for a fisherman, and he caught him. And he turned him into another kind of a fisherman who would go seeking for men and who would catch them, having learned of Christ. There's a rough, tough preacher who's done a great work for God up in the lumber camps, up in Alaska, extreme northern areas, hard, hard working man. One occasion he was flying up to one of these northern reaches in the middle of the winter and uh, he was sitting beside a businessman and they started to talk and uh, he asked the businessman what he did. He was in mining equipment. He was going up to uh, sell some equipment up in this mine. And he said to the preacher, uh, what are you doing? Oh, he said, I'm going fishing. He said, fishing, man? Everything's frozen solid. What do you mean fishing? That's what I'm doing, going fishing. He said, have you ever been up in the north before? I said, well, sure. Have you ever gone fishing in the north in the wintertime? Oh, I said, I do it all the time. I said, is that right? He said, uh, what do you catch? Oh, he says, I catch real big ones. Is that right? Where? Well, the fellow was silent for a few minutes, and then he said, uh, well, like, what kind of fish do you catch? Well, he said, actually, when I catch them, they're dead. But uh, once they're caught, they're, they're alive. He said, come on, you're, you're, you're putting me on, aren't you? He said, well, sort of. And by this time, the hook was well in. And he poured into that man's heart the glorious gospel message. What a wonderful privilege we have to follow him. But if we follow him, he'll take us by way of Calvary, won't he? He'll cause us to see through his eyes the multitudes in their desperate need. He'll change our hearts and our longings and our dreams and our ideas about what true riches are. And we will have the blessed privilege of being associated with him in the greatest of all works, in the building of this magnificent edifice that is the home of God, established forever and filled with the glory of God.